Good morning, friends. It is Tuesday, July 26th, and I am going to attempt a day in the life today. Um, as you've seen, I cleaned up the kitchen. All of the dishes did not get done last night. Unfortunately, that seems to be the norm these days, where the, video, where the dishes don't get completely done every night. And today was the first day I felt like I could try to, to, to fill the dishwasher and clean the sink. And I was able to do that, but now I'm resting again. Um, as far as my injuries go and my recovery, it's slow. It's going very slowly. Um, much of the pain in my leg has diminished, which is good. I don't have to wear the thigh uh, compression sleeve anymore. I still am using a crutch on occasion mainly because my legs are very weak from having sat around for so long and both my legs are recovering from pretty severe injuries so i just don't want to fall again so i'm wearing, using the crutch mainly for stability not because my leg hurts necessarily um i have noticed that the second fall i hurt my left side my left knee has been bad for a long time. In fact, I don't know if you remember, if you guys have followed me for any amount of time, you might remember that I used to get cortisone shots in my left knee and um, haven't had to do that for quite a few years now, but I have noticed that this left knee is act playing up a little bit. Not a lot, but every once in a while when I take a step, it kind of has a pain and acts like it's gonna buckle. That's a little bit concerning for me. I'm gonna probably keep a knee brace on. Olivia's outside doing chores. That's why Oliver's having a fit. <laughs> Although he can go out the doggy door, which he just did. Anyway, um, mo now that most of my like muscular injuries are healing and not in so much pain, I think really the most damage that was done in the second fall was my back to my back my back is um really sore i can't hurt i can't stand for a very long without it start starting to ache so unless there's drastic improvement this week next week i'm going to call the spine and joint place that i went to several months ago and they did like miraculous things for my um, back um, through acupuncture massage and chiropractic adjustments and so I think I'm gonna have to go back and go through another series of therapies with them because I just don't want to live with this pain and I learned the last time not to wait six months before I go and get some treatment so um, yeah that's the plan next Tuesday I'm gonna call them um, I would call them this Tuesday but Unlike most places, they can get you in really quickly. Like if I called them today, I could probably get in on Thursday. And I just need, I think I need another week for my muscles to uh, repair themselves because the back of my, my hamstring is still tender. Um, and I just don't want, I don't want them hurting me. <laughs> to 
be honest. I don't want them mashing around on me and, and hurting me. So I'm going to give it another week for natural healing of my body to take place. And then I will probably go back. Um, I'll call them Tuesday, next Tuesday. Um, today, uh, the plans are to finish digging the potatoes. We got started with that uh, yesterday. Uh, my sister Becky came over and helped us. We got three rows done. We've got five rows of potatoes. We got three done. I wasn't a whole lot of help, honestly. I can't, I can't dig anything, and I really can't bend over very well. Uh, so I wasn't a whole lot of help, but I tried to be as helpful as I could be. Um, and today I think it's going to be mainly Olivia doing the rest of it. Um, my sister's suffering from a sinus infection, so she is not feeling well, and I don't want her to come back over here when she's not feeling well um, so when we go out I will show you the potatoes we dug yesterday um, we got a, I'm very pleased with the haul with the the, the um, harvest of our potatoes uh, a lot of things in our garden are not doing great this year but I am very pleased with the potato harvest for I mean we didn't har plant a huge patch fairly small patch of potatoes, but um, I think we did really well so far. So I will show you that. Um, last night, I meant to take a picture and I just I just didn't. We had, our supper was entirely homegrown. Uh, the reason why I had to cook, clean up that uh, big roaster pan is because I cooked up some of our home-raised chicken. Uh, I cooked it in the uh, cooker till it was just done and then Scott finished it off on the grill put some barbecue sauce on it That was delicious and then we cooked up some of the potatoes that we dug yesterday the ones that accidentally get punctured when, with the pitchfork if you've ever dug potatoes it's impossible to not damage some of them when you're digging them um, so we just pulled out the ones that had gotten damaged and we scrubbed them up, Olivia scrubbed them up, and we boiled them, we had some boiled uh, potato, new potatoes, fresh potatoes right out of the garden. We had sliced cucumbers out of our garden. We've only got two cucumber plants, and it's doing pretty good. I mean, we're not getting a huge amount. I'm not gonna be pickling cucumbers or anything like that. But there's enough that we're having fresh cucumbers every every so often with our, our dinner, and that's delicious. And we also had some of the little yellow cherry tomatoes. So our entire dinner last night was produced by our own hands, which is really kind of cool. All right, I'm going to sit here and rest a little bit. Like I said, Olivia's out doing chores um, and um, loading the dishwasher and scrubbing the sink. Got my back aching so I'm gonna rest a little bit and get something to drink because I'm very thirsty and then we're gonna go out and I'll show you the potatoes and we'll hopefully get those finished uh, digging those potatoes today my butterfly bushes are blooming they weren't doing good at all and then we had a real good rain on Saturday and it really perked everything up and they're doing really well so those are the rows we got dug yesterday, those three rows, and Olivia's working on, I believe we just have two rows left. It's really hard to distinguish the potatoes from the weeds. Please disregard all the weeds. Those completely got away from us while I was down injured, and then we got all that rain, and the weeds just went crazy once we got all that rain. Um, I'm not really going to help be able to help her a whole lot. This is how much she's gotten just within, I think, one or two plants. And there's not like a lot of them, but they're really big, most of them. <laughs> she just put a handful of tiny ones in. But um, the, for the most part, they're really, really big potatoes. And we discovered that we have actually three different varieties of potatoes. These are russets. This one's kind of shaped like a heart. Yeah, there's a heart-shaped potato. <laughs> um, these are russets. Then we have red potatoes and Yukon gold, I believe. Uh, I don't really remember what is in these last fi final two rows, but we shall see. 
this plant here that she's currently digging was an experiment. I had fed my worms some potato, um, like just the like ends of potatoes, the sprouted ends, and it started to sprout in my worm farm. So I pulled them out and thought, hey, let's stick them in the garden and see what happens. And so far you see one little tiny baby one is all we got. But let's see if there's any more in there. And it doesn't appear that that little experiment did a whole lot. Oh wait, there, I think I saw another one. Another little one. Oh, back this, right, huh? right there. I don't know what you're talking about. Right there. Is that a potato? Yeah. Two little baby potatoes. Yeah, I guess we got two little tiny baby potatoes out of that little experiment. At least, at least it was something. So she's been working on these two rows now and we don't have nearly as many potatoes as we got out of that section so we've determined which I already knew potatoes prefer Sun um, and these two rows were in the more shade they were pretty much in the shade so I don't I think that's why the yield is so much less so next year we're thinking of planting the rows this way instead of the, the direction that they're doing now we'll we'll plant them the opposite direction and we'll uh, try to keep them mostly all in the Sun and I think we'll get a better yield overall because the plants were the same um, they were no different than the plants that we planted here or the seed potatoes but um, the only difference is the growing conditions a lot less sun here. So this is what Olivia got out of today's digging, the last two rows. I'm gonna have Travis, as soon as he can, um, till this all up. And who knows, he might unearth a few more potatoes, but he's gonna till it up and then I'm gonna put, I think I'm gonna put some cheap tarps down on it just for the rest of like through until winter and then, or maybe even till next spring, just to keep the weeds from growing so fast. Um, this, this specific spot has not been a garden for a long time. And so the weeds are just very aggressive here. But I think that's what I'm gonna try to do. I had, we had considered doing a second planting of potatoes, but I got hurt and we don't have a super long growing season here in northern Indiana, so I don't think we're gonna mess with it. So here's the potatoes we got yesterday, minus the little tiny baby ones and the ones that got stabbed with the pitchfork. Um, about, I would say it's about double what we got today, but Olivia's gonna go ahead. We put them out here so they can dry, and I guess the term is like harden off. I'm not sure, I need to look online or in one of my gardening books to find out how long you have to leave them. But you're supposed to lay them out and have them not touching for a certain amount of time till they kind of dry up a little bit. 
That way they don't uh, mold and rot when you go to store them. So I haven't been able to do, I'm really sad because I like digging potatoes. I used to really love it when I was younger, but I have not been able to do much of anything with this harvesting because I can't bend over. Um, my back is just too sore. In fact, when I first injured myself the second time, I could not bend over to pick up anything. I mean, I could barely move. So Scott got me this little grabber thing so that if I dropped something on the floor, I could pick it up. And yesterday I did pick up a few of the potatoes with this, but I was so slow. It was just quicker for, for Olivia and, and Becky to just do it. So anyway, that's our potato harvest. Some of them are huge, like, like this one right here is ginormous. You know, it doesn't really pick up in the video, but that's a really big potato. This one's pretty good. Yeah, and there's like, Olivia's got small hands, but still, I think hey. it's bigger than her hands. Conjoined potatoes. Yeah, it's a big weird one. Two of them formed together. Maybe, or something, maybe there was yeah. a root or something that kept it from forming in that spot. Who knows? You never know what you're going to get when you're digging I potatoes. Think it's two, because even if that was a root, this would be an awfully weird shaped potato. Very yeah. round. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why I like digging potatoes, because it's like a treasure hunt. You never know what you're going to find. Our green peppers are not doing really great in these swimming pools. This, this thing here is some kind of a volunteer something. I'm not sure what it is. It came out of the compost that we put in, in these uh, uh, tubs to kind of fill the, fill the tubs. We got dirt out of our compost pile and we got some volunteer tomato plants coming up and then this volunteer, I don't know what, cucumber or um, cantaloupe, not really sure, but the green peppers are not doing great. Uh, I've also got banana peppers here and they're not doing great. I don't know. I don't know if the, if the soil was too shallow or the weather's been really crappy, um, too hot, not enough rain. So our garden in general is not doing very well. We've had some success with a few things like the potatoes I can consider them a success um, our cucumbers are doing pretty good and we've got a ton of tomatoes but they're not uh, ripening ripening very quickly um, in these tubs over here the weeds the weeds have just taken over it looks like Olivia threw ugh, stuff in these are the watermelons this not just not doing very well. I've got one little melon that's coming on. I don't know if it'll amount to anything. These yellow squash didn't do nothing. Like that plant looks really healthy, but there's nothing on it. This plant, none of they did, didn't just produce. They just produced nothing. They just did horrible. And my zucchini plant, I've gotten two or three little zucchini off of it. And it's about looking sad too. So, like, here's one. I'm going to go ahead and just pick it. It's a little small, but that's okay. Um, we'll eat it tonight, maybe. But I have determined that squash do not do well in containers, and I'm not going to do it next year. And watermelon don't do great either. I wanted to show you guys something different that we did in our house. We did this over the 4th of July week that Scott was home and I was not injured. This is the uh, hutch that was originally out in our entryway. Um, I had been wanting to move it for quite some time. I finally convinced Scott to do it. So we moved it to this section or this section of the wall in my living room. Here's my chair. So it was where that little table was and then I had that shelving thing on the wall and so I moved it in here for a couple of reasons these cabinet doors down here were kind of a nightmare to use 
had all of Scott's like lunch things in there and he was constantly having a fight with it and it was aggravating to him. Plus, out in the entryway, I couldn't enjoy my little villages that I worked so hard on to, you know, make cute. And they also, whenever the guys would walk through there because it was a narrow, it's a narrow space and they're broad shouldered, they're constantly knocking stuff off of here. It was so frustrating to me, kind of frustrating to them too, I suppose. And also, I couldn't keep it very clean because our entryway, you know, that's where everybody drags in dirt and, and, and so my little village here was really dirty and it was getting damaged and I couldn't enjoy it. And like I said, the cabinet part was not super useful because it was aggravating. So I moved in here and then everything that was on that shelf that used to hang on this wall was my little collection of dachshund figurines. I was able to put those on this top shelf and out in the entryway this top shelf wasn't even usable because the cabinets that we have on the wall out there we, was barely enough room for clearance for this. So the top shelf was not even usable. So now I'm able to put all my little docks and figurines and then I've got this kerosene lamp that was just stuck in a cabinet, not really even usable if we had a power outage, but now I have a place to put that. So if our power goes out, we can light that kerosene lamp. And so yeah, I really, really like the way this has turned out. I sit here at night in my chair and I'm able to just look at this and enjoy it. Um, I purchased these, these are electric they're, they've got a cord. They're not cordless. They've got a cord um, and it came four to a set of these little candles and so I'm able to light up the village and able to sit here in the evenings and um, enjoy, enjoy looking at it. And then in this drawer here, like down here, I've got my all of my devotional stuff, my Bible, just all kinds of things in here that I'm able to access. And then in the drawer here, it's kind of a mess, but we have our remotes for the TV and like my pain reliever from when I was hurt. Good old BioFreeze um, gum, of course, gum everywhere. But just things that I might need, especially when I was recuperating and stuck in the chair. Um, it's just in this drawer. And then when we're not using it, um, we can just close it all up and nobody can see anything. And then over here on this side, I've got my diamond dot painting stuff. Um, it's just here easy to pull out when I want to work on it. And it keeps it clean because it was sitting out. I just had it sitting out and it was getting kind of dusty. So it'll stay nice and clean in this drawer. So I think this is a much better use of this cabinet. And I really like the way it pulls the yellow from my dining room kitchen. It pulls that into the living rooms because as you can see, I mean, I know there's junk on the counter, but we have an open um, design to this house. Dining room, kitchen, and the living room is all kind of open. And so by pulling this yellow hutch in here, just pulled the yellow from the kitchen into this room as well. Another thing that I did, well, let me go show you the entryway first. I'll show you what I put out there to um, kind of help with that area. Here's the entryway area, and this is our little refrigerator. We don't, we it's full of stuff, but it's mostly like beverages and um, different things like that that are in there. And then above that is our little shoe caddy thing. And then right here, like all the way up flush against the refrigerator, all the way over flush up against here was where that yellow hutch was. And then, like I said, it went all the way up to the top and we couldn't use the top shelf because there's the cabinets that came down. So now um, we were having an issue with um, Oliver. Whenever we would leave the house, he would get mad and so he would take our shoes any shoes that were laying out here in the entryway forgive the dirt 
constant battle, keeping the sand out of the house. Um, he would take them outside and chew them up. I lost two pairs of shoes. Olivia lost uh, at least one pair of shoes from him chewing them up. So we got an old laundry basket, one of our old laundry baskets that was breaking and we were about ready to throw it out anyway. We put it out here and we put all of our shoes in it and for whatever reason, he's like afraid to stick his nose in the basket and so he does not pull our shoes out and take them, drag them outside and chew them up. So we've done that. Um, these are my shoes I actually just need to throw in there. And believe it or not, Olivia just swept this room day before yesterday. Look at all of the dirt. That's because we were working in the garden for the last two days and we dragged sand in on our feet. And Lisa basically stays in this area. Hope, you know, keep it from going to the rest of the house. But she really needs to shake these rugs out again and sweep. But anyway, this is now what we're using for Scott's lunch stuff and chips and snacks. And this is, as you can see, it's little tykes. This was our changing table that we had for both Travis and Olivia. There was a, a, another part, I think we still have it, it's gotta be down in the basement somewhere, that would attach to the top of this. And that was where you would lay your baby. It was kind of like concave, so they couldn't fall off or roll off. And yeah, we used it as a changing table for both Travis and Olivia. Travis is 24 years old. We got this at a garage sale. I can't remember, I think we maybe paid $10 for it. And I've hung on to it all these years because I keep using it for storage. I've always found it very useful for storage. And even though it says little tykes and it's plastic, um, it, hey, it works. It works. And then on the, in this little basket here, I've got all of our um, saran wrap, wax paper, parchment paper, that kind of stuff, an umbrella. Uh, these are the things that were in the drawer of the yellow hutch. And under here, I've got my extra placemats. This basket here is for extra bread. When we have an overflow of bread and it won't all fit in the bread box. And then these are just two of my little Pioneer Woman pans. I use them on occasion. They're metal, so you can't put them in the microwave. But if we just have a little bit of vegetables to heat up or whatever, we'll use these. And then, like I said, inside here is snacks and whatnot. And then down there in the bottom, our chips we don't have a whole lot of chips going on right now but that's where we would put chips if we had them so this has worked out really really well scott likes it a lot better this thing takes up less space it doesn't stick out as far they're not whacking into stuff knocking stuff off with their shoulders and he likes the fact that he can actually open those doors without struggling with them so this has worked out really well Originally, I thought I would just use this temporarily out here until I could find another cabinet of some sort at a garage sale. But I've decided it's not ugly. It's kind of a neutral color. I covered the top of it with some Pioneer Woman shelf liner. And it's working fine. It's working great. So why spend money? Why spend money when you don't have to? So I'm just going to use it. And the last kind of biggest, biggish change that I've done in the house is I moved my cat picture back in here in the dining room. I really, really liked that painting that I got from um, Twice Treasure, but I just, my eye could not get accustomed to it being on this wall because it is the picture, I'll show you where I put it in a minute, but the picture of the florals, the floral painting that I had, it was so bright and so busy. And my walls were bright yellow and there was a lot of yellow in that picture. And I couldn't, my, I had a hard time um, designing the sconces that would look nice with that picture because it was so <clears throat> busy and so bright that I, my, my brain just couldn't, couldn't accept it. I would sit in my chair at night and would look in here at this wall because I can directly see this wall from my my seat in the living room and it was just it was overwhelming my senses or something. I just never felt settled with it. It was just too bright, too much going on on an already bright wall. So I went ahead and put this picture back here. 
Um, I really like this picture. It's not faded out. Some people think that it's, you know, sun faded. Um, it's not. That's the way it has been since I bought it. Um, oh my goodness gracious. Probably 35 years ago now I bought this picture. Um, it was my very first expensive large purchase as a young person fresh out of my mom's house. I spent more money on this. I don't even remember how much I paid for it, but at the time I was thinking, I can't believe I'm spending this much money. It was probably, I don't know, $40 or something um, I got, I spent on this painting. And I just, I really, I still like it. I like the fact that because it is muted and more neutral tones, it just calms this wall down, makes it more, I don't know, it gives me a more restful feeling looking at the wall with not so much bright busyness going on. Now I put the other one in here and it's kind of dark. Let's see if I can turn on a light. This is where I had the cat picture when I switched things around and I just decided to just switch them and see what I thought. And honestly, I like this picture so much better on this wall because this wall is a neutral color. All those bright colors coming out has brightened up this wall, if that makes any sense. And when I look at this wall with this painting and my shelves and the way I have it, um, styled it's a rest it gives me a restful feeling inside so that's what I did I love this painting I still love this painting I just didn't love it on that yellow wall if that makes any sense here's a little update on my deck situation here uh, I told you in the last day in the life video or the last update video that I would um, show you this pot once all the flowers started blooming really well and so here it is and I think it's absolutely gorgeous I am going to keep this tag and I am going to buy these flowers every year because they are just absolutely gorgeous I love them so much my thyme is doing really well. We've harvested once off of it and put it in the dehydrator. Uh, this is my sunflowers, those two little spindly sunflowers that made it. Um, they're growing like crazy and it looks like they're forming a, a head up at the top here. My geraniums are doing really well. They just went through another um, blooming, uh, I don't know what you call it. They've bloomed again. I need to trim off all this dead stuff, um, but they're doing really well. My mint is doing okay. It almost looked like a critter was eating it, but I didn't think any insects ate mint. But anyway, it's doing okay. Um, this kale is pretty much done for. I'm going to um, cut it and let Olivia give it to the rabbits. Um, my cilantro bolted, so it's pretty much done. Parsley is done. Chives are, I mean, they still look good and I could probably harvest a little off of it if I wanted to. And the um, rosemary is starting to grow. It took a long time for it to start to grow, but it is growing now and I've taken a little bit off of it and cooked with it. And I think I mentioned before I am going to take this pot in the house and try to winter it over. And then this, this flower is doing okay. It, it's not as full as I would have liked it to be, but it's still really pretty. And of course my impatience have not disappointed. They do well every single year on this deck, in these pots. They are just beautiful and they will look beautiful like this until we get a first our first hard frost this plant this house plant i don't think i'm even going to take it back in the house this year uh, i kind of not really enjoyed this plant much anyway and it's just looking really pitiful but my uh, peace lilies are doing really well so they like it out here on the deck 
even though I about sunburnt that one to death because <laughs> I had it out in too much sun earlier in the season. So I will remember they have to go up right next to the house next summer when I bring them out. I looked in my gardening book and it said once the potatoes were dry, you needed to dust, dust them off, dust all the loose um, dirt off of them, brush all the loose dirt off them, and then put them in a single layer in a cool, dark place for two weeks till their skins get hardened and then you can put them in a bag or a bucket or whatever. So that's what Olivia and I did tonight. We got them out of the garage. We dusted all the dirt off of them and I put them on this plant stand here in my office and I'm gonna cover it. I'm gonna put a blanket over it. Um, I don't spend a whole lot of time down here since I've been hurt. Um, but I do come down here on occasion to work on videos and whatnot, and then that's when I turn that light on. But otherwise, the only light that's in here is the light I have over my worm bin. I have to have that light because otherwise the worms will try to escape, and that is not fun. <laughs> if They don't like light, so they stay under the dirt, and they don't try to climb out of the bin. But because that light is on all the time, I am going to put a blanket or something over the front of this to shield it from that light. But yeah, that was a good harvest. We figure that between what we ate, we ate some last night, we ate some tonight, and then we of course gave some to Becky. And then we didn't do a, an official weight, but we just kind of estimated that we probably got about 45 pounds of potatoes out of that little potato patch. So it was quite successful. So in two weeks, these can be uh, bagged up. We'll give half to my sister and we'll keep half and we'll have some potatoes. It obviously won't last us the whole winter or anything like that, but it will definitely help on the grocery budget. All right, friends, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. It's been a long video. Again, I guess I had a lot of ch chat and, and catching up to do. So uh, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. I love chatting with you guys in the comments. And we will talk to you all later. Bye-bye, friends.